Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the 18 sound ND1480 BE Beryllium 1.4 inch compression driver. So we're going to do full set of test data and then also some subjective listening impressions along with some comparisons against uh, some other similar size format compression drivers. So this driver retails for $1,485 US each. And so it's uh, near the top of the price uh, range for compression drivers of this size and so uh, we'll just review some of the features so it uses a three inch uh, beryllium diaphragm it has a polymer surround and it claims that it has extended high frequency with minimal breakup and so the sensitivity is 112 db at one watt and it's a 1.4 inch throat and it also features a copper sleeve to reduce uh, distortion, okay? So we're gonna start by first reviewing the published impedance sweep. And so it has a 460 Hertz uh, FS or fundamental resonance. And if we look closely at the upper treble, we can see that it's breakup free until around 17 kilohertz. Uh, the test data for the published was done on the XR146 or 1464C uh, constant directivity waveguide from 18 sound and so that needs to be factored in when looking at the published frequency response that you can see here which has a falling response as you move into the upper treble and so that's typical of all constant directivity horns uh, so on the ES by radio that we're testing today it's the 600 Hertz cutoff version and so it might have a little more uh, output in the treble um, so let's uh, look at the measured impedance curve that we were able to achieve here and so the FS is at 460 Hertz which is exactly as published which is uh, really good to see and so we see the first breakup occurring at 16.5 kilohertz so if we zoom in uh, closely matches um, published so just conducting uh, raw frequency response data uh, on axis and then also at 15, 30, and 45 degrees off axis. You can see here uh, the driver is relatively linear um, and then we see that the breakup results in actually a dip in the upper treble and then a peak. So uh, it's always a good better to have a dip than a peak uh, there but so we see good extension up to around 15 kilohertz where we see it fall off. Now I tried a variety of capacitors just as a simple first order high pass filter um, and so you can see here that 8.2 microfarad is in green and then 3.9 is in blue. Um, so for the remaining tests I used the 3.9 capacitor just to more uh, closely represent real real use case scenario uh, with a flat response. So looking at time domain, uh, starting with burst decay, we see a very clean burst decay. Uh, starting at the 15 kilohertz region, we see some stored energy. Sorry, we can see here, actually looking at it as a sonogram, uh, you can see here that we see a little bit of stored energy starting at around 10K with, uh, with it really kind of uh, starting to break up quite severely at the uh, 15 or 16 kilohertz region and so you can see here that it rings out to around 24 periods uh, using uh, 35 dB vertical scale. Okay so the uh, CSD plot is shown here which is very fast decay um, and it actually looks a little better with the CSD plot and that we're only about 1.2 millisecond uh, ringing out at the worst uh, part of the frequency spectrum. So next I measured distortion and we're starting with harmonic with an 85 dB test signal. So you can see here that it has a very uh, well behaved distortion profile with H2 second harmonic being predominant. However, it's extremely low at only 0.1%. And then the higher order uh, is a full, I guess, decade. Yeah, decade below that at 0.01%. Uh, percent. So um, raising the test SPL to 95, we see a modest increase in H2, uh, however with H3 and H4 remaining very low. Um, changing the uh, scale to dB instead of percent, you can see here just for reference uh, the change there. So it's just showing the same data but with the vertical scale changed to dB. So just for comparison's sake, um, showing the uh, eminence N314X, which has a text stream 
diaphragm. So this is at the 85 dB test signal level. We can see um, that it is also H2 is predominant. Um, looking at the 85 here, uh, we can see that they're very similar in their overall characteristics. Uh, intermodulation distortion, you can see here, uh, very low IMD and using a 12 band per octave test signal. Um, you can just see it there. I'll put a link to the blog post if you want to review that in detail. Um, so you can see here that it's pretty much in keeping with every other compression driver. Uh, not every other, but with, uh, you know, it's an average uh, result there, uh, consistent with what I've seen with other compression drivers. Um, so with the speaker set up in a two-way setup, and conducted subjective listening impressions. You can see here I've ranked uh, sound stage depth 9 out of 10, width 8 out of 10, and smoothness 10 out of 10, uh, coherence up between mid range and treble 10 out of 10, vocal clarity 10 out of 10, um, and act accurate musical timbre. Uh, 10 out of 10 and then sense of dynamic range 10 out of 10 so uh, the only areas that it falls short would be in the sound stage depth giving it 9 out of 10 and over on the sound stage width um, so the the compression driver surprised me for its ability to reproduce upper frequencies with precision and accuracy uh, cymbals and electric guitar was faithfully rendered in terms of texture and nuance but also with proper dynamics uh, the driver does not sound soft but exerts itself with confidence and grace it also did not come across as harsh or metallic in any way the mid-range and treble offers very good clever uh, clarity as I play track to track, each recording takes on a unique character uh, that is colorful and engaging. Um, so I say all of this and I wanted to just provide uh, some context to my review and that this is a medium uh, size format compression driver um, on a medium size format horn, uh, which is the ES600 by radial. So, if we're having a general discussion about the ultimate sound about ultimate sound quality then it needs to be pointed out that a larger horn will provide a larger sense of scale and clarity and in turn a more engaging listening experience um, if we are talking cost no object ultimate sound quality uh, then the es450 or the es290 uh, particularly with the tad 4003 uh, will provide those attributes mentioned so the next interesting aspect that I wanted to do was to compare it uh, against a, a similar size compression driver, one that I've used in a number of projects in the past, and that's the SB Acoustic 65 CDNT. So this is a two and a half, uh, diam two and a half inch diameter diaphragm, titanium, and it also has a polymer surround also has copper shorting rings to reduce distortion and so this would be uh, my benchmark for overall affordable great sound solution for a compression driver and so seeing how much better the beryllium is compared to this driver is, is uh, a good comparison so directly comparing the two drivers reveal that they are closer than one might expect uh, they both offer the same perceived frequency response balance however the 18 sound offers slightly more sound stage depth due to the slight increase in clarity both drivers share the same smooth sound character and the difference between the two drivers are not as significant as other potential variables in the system such as source sound quality uh, in other words these differences could easily be masked by limitations in upstream components uh, just to provide some context okay so um, I wanted to see uh, how um, you know rather than spend the money on this 18 sound compression driver because it is very expensive uh, it occurred to me that for a little more money you could buy both the SB Acoustic 65 CDNT and the flagship Fostex T500A Mark III Super Tweeter um, so this would this combination be preferable in terms of sound quality okay so you either do the beryllium 18 sound or do the SB Acoustics compression driver and take the saved money and buy the flagship Fostex Super Tweeter. So I decided to actually test these two different configurations and just see. 
Um, so here's the Fostex Super Tweeter. Um, it's a 10 centimeter diameter uh, platinum coated magnesium diaphragms, uh, double stacked on eco magnet. So it's top of the line from Fostex. And so you can see here the speaker set up in my listening space uh, with the SB Acoustics. And so the, the Super Tweeter is coming in at around 8 kilohertz, and it's just providing some added ambience, added soundstage width, and improving those leading edge of transients due to the extremely light diaphragm uh, of the Bullet Tweeter. So the uh, 65 CDNT plus T500A combination provided a little wider soundstage width, but the real difference was in that characteristic Alnico sound of the Fostex. So it has a slightly richer sound character in the treble region compared to the 18 sound, where the 18 sound comes across slightly gray sounding. From a measurement perspective, I would suspect that this is attributed to the higher level of H2 harmonic, so second harmonic distortion with the Fostex. So to show this, I've shown the T500A Mark III harmonic distortion sweep at 85 dB test signal. And so you can see that at the 10 kilohertz region, uh, second harmonic exceeds 1%. So it begs the question, as to whether this H2 attribute could be added with a good tube preamp uh, when using the 18 sound. So to test this theory, um, I added the Don Sax tube preamp to the system, which is shown below. So this is a this is a very um, I guess high end uh, for me anyways uh, tube preamp that I've been using for uh, a number of years, and so it has a characteristic tube warmth that it adds to the sound, and so I had conducted a full set of electrical measurements on the Don Sachs preamp a few months earlier. Um, and so the harmonic distortion profile at the RCA outputs of the preamp is shown below. And this is for the four volt output. So you can see here that there's a bit of a ladder effect to the distortion profile where we have the second harmonic as predominant, you can see it there. Now at the 10 kilohertz region, you can see that the H2 is at 0.3%, and then H3 and H4 is significantly lower at 0.03 and 0.004%, okay? So, uh, and this I should mention is not an attribute that's common to amplifiers and preamplifiers. Um, I've kind of correlated that my preference is uh, equipment that has this distortion profile where it has a little bit of H2 coming in and then the higher or higher order harmonics are well suppressed below um, probably the audibility threshold there. So, um, so setting this up and listening uh, confirmed what I suspected based on the measurements. So the Don Sax preamp brought a romantic sound character to the entire frequency spectrum and not just the treble like what, what we heard with the uh, Fostex Super Tweeter. Uh, so it brought that warm tube sound to the entire frequency spectrum when listening to the 18 sound compression driver. And this became especially appar apparent on this particular test track uh, in HD um, sampling rate there. So you, I'll post a link um, there to the title uh, link so you can hear this track, but it's a beautiful soundtrack. Um, gives a, a uh, wonderful sound character with the uh, with the tube preamp. So this is more of an academic interest, which is moving beyond this compression driver review. But essentially, the 18 sound offers a clean slate to which you can quote flavor uh, the sound profile to your liking with the addition of a tube amp, tube amp or other method. And so, just curious, something that's also been in the back of my mind is whether this can be done. Uh, via DSP. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've experimented with DSP solutions which add tube warmth. Uh, curious to know if that's been done successfully. So at this point uh, I would like I would place a tie between the two configurations. The addition of the tube preamp leveling the playing field against the SB Acoustic 65 CDNT with the T500A Super Tweeter. Uh, the question then becomes, what happens when I use the tube preamp with the 65 CDNT and T500A? Um, so definitely going down a rabbit hole on this one, but uh, I found it very interesting. So this configuration was even better than the 18 sound and 
Don Sax preamp. Uh, so the Don Sax preamp has a way of widening the sound stage even further uh, than even further with no preamp uh, with the T500A. Uh, there becomes more space around the vocalist. The romantic aspect is increased as well as a result of the above attributes. So this could also serve as a caution when evaluating compression drivers. So if the driver sounds cold and clinical, it could be the lack of H2 distortion and not some sin of commission from the compression driver itself. Okay, so in conclusion, my listening impressions on the ND1480BE left me impressed. The driver provides impeccable measurements as well, especially in the 6 to 12 kilohertz region. So um, there you have it, 18 sound beryllium compression driver. Take care and have a great day.